Welcome to Dwarven Forge Live. This is our oh. Reliquary's deep dive into the Ability Tracker. We're going to take a look at this mighty little Reliquary today and chart the story of how the heck it came to be. I am Nate. I'm joined, well, he's, he ran away. I'm joined by Toby. Oh, Mr. And people. Chris over in the battle station in the corner. There he is. Hey, Woo. how's it going? Woo! So we're gonna uh, we're gonna spend the next hour uh, looking at the ability tracker, figuring out how uh, how we got here. Uh, we're gonna take your questions, and we're gonna do a giveaway at some point in the middle. So yes, uh, we stay are. tuned for a secret word. Do you have a secret word, Q? I'll think about it as we go. It's a secret. Yeah. Okay. It's a secret. All right. Is there anything else we uh, we can do on this one? Should we run channel points to see if Miles has to be Toby's arm for the duration of the stream? Oh yeah. How did yeah. that? How did the? Uh, <laughs> how did that go yesterday? That's fine. Uh, uh, Tyler won one. So Woo! He finally. Yeah, he got his first point. Yeah. It was when and they both did cities with Elemental. But he got like 100% of the vote on that one. Wow. Yeah. I don't think it was 100%. It, I, was it? It was. Oh, six okay. Points, he got 100. But I'm sensing so. that uh, he didn't win in the end. I won no. two of them. The third one, yeah, the first one was like unanimously. So the first one wasn't really fair. It was Dwarven. Toby got Hellscape. Tyler got Castles. So he didn't have time to like That's tough. actually get the build finished. That's but tough. I didn't even get to use my arms for that one. Yeah. yeah. Miles was Toby's arms for the Toby Hellscape. Toby without build. arms versus yeah. Tyler with a castle. Yeah. This is a uh, He lost a coin flip, so that was on him. That was yeah. Yeah, in retrospect, uh, part of making it fair should have been giving Tyler first pick no matter what. Uh, but it is what it is. Alright. Um, well anything else we're gonna uh, cover today? Uh, we're going to be going over the ability tracker, uh, more or less. There's no documentary for this one, as it's just one sculpt, but uh, this is going to be the closest thing we get to that documentary, actually. We've got some concept art and some... I don't know, are they design... What do you call the 3D... The, renders? It's not, a, it's not a design document. Renders? Is it renders? The, Blueprints? We're going to go over, <laughs> we're gonna go renders, over some really, imagery yeah. Yeah. that shows the, uh, the kind of process in creating the ability tracker and its uh, accessories. Toby did uh, some archival work, digging through diagrams to sort of document the, the course of this uh, this thing. He's after to uh, Tyler's job. Yeah. Ooh. You, you're taking him out in yeah. build gyms and you're going to be the yeah. archivist? Oh. <laughs> mesh yeah. files? Maybe mesh files. Makes sense. So the, um, the genesis of this thing was uh, I really wanted I really wanted to be able to use reliquaries to track abilities. And as we were sort of looking they were getting bigger and more elaborate and whatever. I'm like, if somebody wants to chart out like nine spell slots, we need something that's like smaller and easier to just use in a whole bunch of multiples. Um, and so the, the ability tracker, was early on, we we're like, oh no, there's gonna be this one that's this like lonely orphan that just doesn't have, like it's just for tracking abilities, we're gonna keep it slim and whatever. And Toby, Toby was in charge of the ability tracker, initially because it was like, it, it was a, it was the most technical piece in that we had all these bottom bits we had to do yeah. and whatnot and we didn't we didn't even know it didn't have an identity right it had none yeah. it was just like this it would just basically just had to work in multiples be like like kind of not generic but like universal universal yeah that's where we were like it didn't we didn't want to have a really hard theme to it because you might be tracking your superiority dice, or you might be tracking your warlocks, warlock spell slots, or you might be tracking your key points, or like it was sort of all over the place. So it needed to be broad enough that you yeah. could kind of put any PC ability, like use it to track any PC ability. Do you want to talk about the the tech challenges or the the artistic challenges first? Like where do we want to hmm. where do we want to start on this thing? I guess we can talk about the tech challenges because I feel like that happened more like that was. Uh, we have to figure that out first. Yeah, I think we kind of we figured out what the parameters, what it needed to do, and then figured out how to dress it up. Yeah. yeah for the most part, yeah. So at the beginning, let's put this thing. Back. Yeah, let's, uh... Chris made a, a cool build to show it off in a build. But we'll get yeah. that's that's supposed to be a dessert. We already gave. We let people eat dessert <laughs> early on. Yeah, right. yeah, we show them what's coming. All right. So what uh. What were the? Oh, I could get some light from this. Yeah. What were the? What were our parameters? What? How did we get this thing? Beginning, yeah. This one, we wanted to have like, and we wanted to, you know, 
So nice to be able to sit in, uh, you know, like sideways like that, and I wanted to lock it into attack position. Yeah. Right, that was that was one of the things that uh, didn't come to be, but we were trying to like think of ways to like, you know, the the other Billy Trucker's bases and stuff like that, but uh, we wanted uh, a way for people to be able to lock multiple ones in in any position that they want and however many that they want and not just so we're looking to like these things to be able to like snap it together kind of oh yeah there was the there was the yes i was i kind of i wanted that like i wanted to have a modular base system yeah. which didn't come to fruition yeah thought about it but ultimately we didn't think that people really wanted to or sorry, it would be that beneficial to have a whole set of uh, like molten pieces just to be able to like arrange in a certain like. We kind of had a fiddly a fiddly system yeah. for holding together because I was like, well, if you're using spell slots, you might want to track five, yeah. or you might want to track nine, or you might want to track two, or like you know how many different levels plus you might want the other thing. I was like, I want to be able people to sort of be able to kind of snap them together like Legos. And so they wouldn't wander around on the table. Yeah. So yeah, Chris is showing the. It's the, not live quite yet. Oh, okay. I don't that. Uh, okay. oh yeah, you're right. Cool. It's about to be live. Yeah, Boom. Chris is. This is my uh, workstation in the program I use. I use uh, rhinoceros, so it's a lot more. Uh, it's a lot more about measurement and geometry than uh, uh, texture and stuff like that. I use that back in architecture school and stuff, uh, but. So it's a really fast way to, to model yeah. things in 3D. And be very precise, yeah. Can you kick this out to the printer, the 3D printer from, from Rhino? Uh, pretty much, yeah. I have to put it for one uh, other program, but it's like that just adjusting supports and stuff like that, so. Because yeah. that's been one of the really neat things yeah. is, like you can just sort of rapidly prototype out a thing, yeah. mock it up as soon as we think it looks good, print it out, and then actually we can like see it in person. Yeah. Can we actually get one of those uh, Yeah. So originally we were planning to have a like this uh almost like a inverse gear system thing on the bottom of it that uh you can see those little bone like I don't know what to even call it. You're talking about the thing in like the middle with the spokes kinda coming out? Oh uh, which one? Uh uh like around here, like the middle of the screen you're talking about? Yeah, I guess that's hard to see because it's so small. But uh, on the top left, there were there was those uh, long pieces that kind of like had like little teeth that like would go into those things, and then th that would also be used by the counter dial. It would have a very similar like ring that has like one div on it that like, attaches. Oh, and yeah, Nate brought. Uh, I remember, we had all these uh, these bits. Let me see if I can get that on. Yeah. Can we go to the. Uh, like showing black pieces. Yeah. Right, no, it's, it's, it's popping. Yeah. It's definitely readable. Yeah. So basically, originally this was the idea of the bottom one, what the bottom of the piece would look like, and these uh, pieces over here are like the things so you connect, and they kind of like snap in like this. And we don't have another one here, but basically you can imagine that you do that, and then you can put another one like this. Well, I wanted people to be able to do it in like an arc or a straight yeah. line or like. I didn't want, it wasn't like just one straight, like we wanted it to be modular. Like they yeah. could kind of do whatever arrangement they wanted. If they wanted to put stuff in the square, they could, or whatever. But the idea was you'd lock yeah. together. This would be baked in. This was the bottom of the piece, right? So this would be yeah. part of the piece. And then there's these would let like you click them in so you could kind of make little nodes, like a yeah. molecule or something. Yeah. And then that. It was too fiddly. Yeah, it was too fiddly. And also, uh, this was the original idea for like. Uh, counter dial, a uh, life dial, I mean, and it would, like would use the same system where it would slide in and the one piece would lock in place, and ideally you'd be able to turn it and like it would click. Well, that was it was important that the like the the counter dial lock into place. Like, yeah. You don't want to have that number drift. Yeah. Be it your sorcery points or your life total and magic or whatever. Yeah, like, exactly. You don't want that to wander off. But we achieved that in a new way, but we'll... Yeah. yeah. But ultimately, we decided that uh, uh, 
not only were the pieces too fiddly, but like you didn't lose that much in just like arranging it yourself in a certain position. It's like it yeah. turns out people can actually put them in a straight line or sideways or yeah. without doing anything. Like yeah. Just... And then the plaque came idea came later on. I feel we decided like. Well, that was part of the challenge too. Is it needed to be, have a name plate? Yeah. We didn't know exactly how it was going to fit, but it was like, well, this also needs to not only do it need to connect, but also need to be able to put a name plate on there. Whatever it was like. Uh, and then we were talking about having a wooden base that could then accommodate this also. <laughs> and that was just too many. Uh, it's too much. Yeah. Like a like a a three slot. Yeah. Wooden a, base a that could rise slot vertically. Wooden base you could Get one for first through third, get another one for fourth through uh, six, and get another one for uh, seventh through ninth. Um, or just, you know, if you're only just get one for now or whatever, you know, any combination. Yeah. But uh, it was hard enough just to develop one, uh, one base. Yeah. Ooh, I would like to have four fourth level spells. I didn't even and only I, one. Uh, <laughs> I wasn't even looking at the numbers and then I really? went wow. down one, two, three, four. Your inner, uh, your inner mathematician. <laughs> this is how spells work. Dude, when you get to ninth level spells, it's wild. Yeah. Oh God. So then yeah. the, um, so then how do we get to the, how do we get to the, the pot, the existing base? Oh, we should show, I don't have, where the heck is the, did we send it to CMS the other, um, the next iteration of this that had, I, th oh, I thought the next simulation was no, pretty right. similar to that. Yeah, yeah, why don't you show that one, though? So, yeah, ultimately we decided on uh, this design where basically using a very similar shape to, you know, what a lot of the Dormite pieces already have that indent and using. This one, uh, it has a metal over here, but the metal will be more inset, so... What's like, a piece that has anything? Like an existing... Uh, on a round thing. Oh, the jumpy stone, right? Yeah. We, uh, we that was the, that was a really smart. I was gonna say, I was like, I thought we had acre magnets in a number of these sculpts. Like what? Uh, yeah, specifically a round thing, I guess. And the stone is in perfectly so round. A jumpy so stone on the 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 Toby was like, you know, our pieces already have like, if we're gonna have an anchor magnet, we're already gonna do a thing like this. Let's incorporate this thing into the design. Yeah. Uh, because we know we're already going to do it. Yeah. And that was like, that was the next sort of a, epiphany. It was like, oh yeah, there already is this cool little round thing we can use as the center of a pivot. Yeah. Let's capitalize on that. And this one, yeah, as I said, uh, the metal on the final would be a lot more uh, inset. And this, yeah, right now it's flat, but like basically the uh, the anchor magnet will be able to put this like little hole over here and then kind of click in. And then we would add a little like uh, a little tab or now a little arrow. They were doing um, mountain, like sawtooth. Uh... Yeah, I mean, that's what the, it's a. Oh, yeah, yeah it's right, right. Sorry, I, I skipped ahead. Yeah. We want to do that, but then ultimately they showed off a design that, like, basically, as they were just saying right now, it was like, it was like sawtooth mountain type of thing where it's just like. Like, originally Toby wanted to have a little, yeah. one little clicker that would fit into his yeah. things that would go around. And uh, the factory was worried that it was going to wear down if you. Played five thousand games of Magic like Toby. Uh, I'm not throwing stones. I'm, <laughs> I'm with you too. Uh, and then uh, they said, "Well, you know, if we have, if we do this like like uh, mountains, I wish we had the the 3D render of that one." There. Yeah, I, f I forgot. It's like about vertical that. little yeah. mountains, so then they'll have twenty grooves, and you can just it'll basically just sort of up and down to each groove all the way around. The whole thing is sawtooth. Yeah. yeah. So it should uh, it should work really well. Nice build. Yeah. And it's a uh, counting stone. Yeah. <laughs> you don't, uh... yeah. Wow. It's my new rail card. Stone. Uh, yeah, so basically, uh, since all the the non-hero ones also will have the 35 millimeter face, that would be on uh, all the non-hero rail cards. Oh, yeah, because that was the, the other the thing. Pedestal is whatever we could do here had to work with every, yeah. every throne and pedestal. Yeah, yes. exactly. <laughs> I don't know if the Eldritch ones has it, right? This is probably the most technical piece. They all have... And you wouldn't know by looking at it. 
talking about the pointers? Uh, Elvin has like super clear ones because it has a little gold this guy accents. Has, well, they're all going to have clear ones by the end of the day. But. Right, but I feel like Elvin like yeah. reads the best probably. This guy had drill that. Oh, you did? Nice. Yeah. So yeah, basically all of them, like, you know, since they all have the hole, they'll be able to work on both the counter dial, is a life dial, and the ability tracker plaque like this. And we added this halfway through, but uh, we made sure that each one of the non-heroes also has like a little indicator, like the, you know. There's gonna be something to yeah. indicate. This one hasn't been cleaned up yet. This is gonna have a little, yeah. um, I'll put a little. On, uh, yeah, on. It's that little blue. It's gonna have a little claw. It's gonna yeah. have like a little white tooth that'll shoot yeah. right out, so you know where it is. So yeah, this one you see the. Do we know what's the what's the diameter on the counter dial? Diameter is like uh, sixty millimeters. Yeah, I was gonna say it's more than the it's wider than the heroes. It's, it's more, more than, than fifty. fifty. Yeah, it's like probably sixty or something like that. Finley and Letitia both say sixty. Aha. Hey, Letitia. I guess we have it listed on the site somewhere then. Yeah. Okay. And we just forgot. <laughs> so yeah. So then I guess. What's and then next? how did the plaque? What the was plan. the, how did that thing evolve? Yep, it's on the page. Yeah, right. Plaque we originally wanted, uh, yeah, we didn't know what they do. It was probably, the original thought wasn't going to be like something sculpted at all, right? But it was going to be just something that stuck up that we could put a name on. We didn't know exactly yeah. what. And we are thinking about doing a flat first, but then I forgot how round it came about, but uh, I think it was one of my sketch designs. Well, I think yeah. it's after because we had we didn't really nail that design until yeah. after you'd actually sculpted this. Thing, yeah, right? exactly. Do we have any progress pictures of this of these in the works? The sketch of it, yeah, like the design of it, yeah. Well, let's look at some of those. So this was like trying to figure out how to do a generic yeah. thing. I feel like it was, it was either you or Eli that was like, just let's make a pillar, something that looks like a dungeon pillar. I think I, I, like, I think I was. I remember him making like a clay. You remember he made like just like a little clay lump that had a. Uh, or was that you that made a clay lump? I think it was me. Yeah, there was just like an early clay lump. Yeah. That was like a 38 millimeter lump. There was like, if it's yeah. just a thing that like sits in a dungeon, then we have, um, you know, it can kind of work. If it works with a dungeon, it'll probably work with any character ability. Yeah. So, Chris, do you have that, uh, the picture I sent of the. Yes. The five sketches of the. Ba, 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 ba. Yeah. There we go. Sorry, it's at a weird angle because the shadow was getting in the way. Basically, I was trying to look at five, like, you know, pillar ideas that weren't, you know, just boring generic pillar. Also, I had some of its own character, but be able to work in, you know, a lot of different situations. It needed to be cool. Yeah. Right? It was like it had to have has some have some attitude, yeah. right? It had to feel like a thing. Had to have some gravitas. Gravitas. <laughs> the first one is yeah. The first one is what it pretty much ended up being. That one only has two dragons on the side. And that pointer is on the angle rather than the front of it. The second one I was like I'm trying to look at it's like magic like some like Different it's takes on like very mystic or magical like. It's totally Star Wars video games. It's, yeah. got, like, <laughs> it's got like a lot of crystals on I it. I think one of them I looked at something from a like like Final Fantasy or... Ten or something like that. Like, yeah. 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 Final Fantasy Ten has crystals growing on a lot of stuff. Well, there was this the one temples. very uh, geometric, uh, angly stones that had glows in between. Third one was like. More looking at just you know, uh, Greek pillars and something like that. I, I think fourth was a a similar iteration to second. Just taking kind another of magical. Yeah. Fourth is super yeah. elaborate. Looks very elegant. Yeah. And I don't remember exactly what the design idea behind five was. But dragons were exciting. I think it was the tail pointer that was yeah. like that was the big thing of like, wow, the tail pointer is clever. Yeah. Yeah. It, like it, what we ended up with really is just kind of an adjusted version of of one. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And you know, while I was doing it, like, 
decided that I wanted to like yeah, have like these little dragon on the sides like guarding the dice kind of, but also, you know, the pointer. So And these guys, did they have let's go back to the camera. Yeah. Did they ever have legs? I remember the side guys had legs for a second and then they got removed. Did these guys ever have legs or were no, they those always... guys never had legs just because I tried one uh, I don't know if I tried one, I just realized I thought that it didn't like Well if they don't have, have legs then they're worms, not dragons. Or like Maybe they're like serpents. retractable landing gear. Yeah. <laughs> Airplanes don't have legs. Yeah. They're well, dragons. No. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, so yeah, and then I wanted like, I didn't want the tail to just come down, so I was looking at like Celtic knots, kind of, as an inspiration for how the tail should. Like, it reminds be me of that these. medical staff <laughs> symbol. Yeah. The um, it's got like this. Yeah, I can't remember what it's called. It's got the staff. Cat, the, ca caduceus. Caduceus staff. Yeah, yeah, that's it. And then I put a shield on there because you know. Protect your die. Yeah, protect your die. But then the shield also became like on the plaque part. There's dragons, and then this one has swords on the side, like a sword in the so stone. Well, design. that was that was what was fun when it finally got to the plaque. I was like, well, you know, make the plaque feel like it fits. Yeah. With this thing. Because you, uh, you had, like, we had such cool geometry in here, so you managed to get those little uh, little dragons flying on the side. Right around. It's pretty, uh, it's pretty exciting. This guy's pretty good. Um, then I was, I was excited when we were talking with Die Hard about dice. They just released their Dracona yeah. series, their dragon-themed Dracona series. Let's see if we see this one. And I was like, well, wait a second. We got dragon-themed dice. This is, like... Exactly what we need. So the having dragon scales on the uh, on the dice. So they just release it now. Um, it came out like earlier this year. I don't know. Time sort of all blurs together. Because I remember <laughs> when they when they came by once, he was working on that in a, yeah on the computer. Yeah, it takes yeah. them. It takes it's you cool. just like so their development yeah. time is a long, uh, a long <laughs> run. You can't say anything about that. <laughs> yeah. But so then having a having a. Uh, a dragon themed die. Yeah. It's awesome. Mercy. And they didn't have a cool crimson red one, so we got yeah. a custom crimson red. Yeah. What's Mark saying? Mark's saying if we use them in a build, we can pull the classic prank where we uh, put a pillar with level one, level two, and then level four, and have the players like spend the entire time backtracking through the dungeon looking for level three. <laughs> yeah. Is it there? Is it hidden in the... No. <laughs> it's not in the... It's just no. not there. It's just to make them waste their time. Just <laughs> like the button trap where it's just the counter time and there's a big red button in the thing and the timer is counting down. Every time you press the red button, it resets the timer, but monsters come out. One of my... And then eventually you just realize yeah. that you just let the timer run out, the door opens. Well, it's like... Yeah. My, my it's friend, not fun. My friend who DM'd the first campaign I ever played in has this thing he loves to do and he did it to us and it sucked. We walked into a room, and it was just like an empty room in this dungeon with just like a pillar in the middle. And so, uh, you know, so you say like, uh, I examined the pillar. And he just responds with, okay, the pillar examines you. <laughs> and then like anything you describe saying or doing you with the do pillar, back. he just responds. And so like, we spend like an hour trying to figure out what we're supposed to do with this <laughs> pillar. And after the session, he's like, oh, it doesn't do anything. He's, he's like, there's, oh. there was no puzzle. It was just... Why was he wasting your time? It was just a fun... Yeah. He just wanted to see what we would do. Just want to see it's what like you do. Psych experiment. Yeah. Um, what were the other? I'm trying to think if there's any other crazy curveballs with this thing. Oh, the die well. Oh yeah, the die well. So, the die wells are slightly well. different than most of the die wells on the other reliquaries, where it has a it has a normal circle, so you'll be able to use all your inserts in there. But we really wanted to be able to have dice be, you know able to sit like you know six-sided dice to be able to sit like like this and not in an angle so the number looks like it's sideways but the problem was that there were so many different uh like we found all the different dice we're looking at they're like all the size varied it's annoying how much different how, like the ver the variance in the yeah. dice out there is like why can't the d20 also just be a cube 
kind of shape it's the sizes and the angles and yeah <laughs> yeah yeah and everything is like all over the place also that uh within each uh, different diet like they don't scale up or scale down proportionately no there could just... be a giant d4 in the thing but a regular yeah. size but like it's You'll yeah. see them go with like different ratios for like height to width for D10s. Like some some will be yeah. like no, way the angle longer, is some steep will be way on longer some like, than others. Yes, yeah, yeah. this guy fits. Yeah, get. Hey, wilderness encounter! Thanks for stopping by. It was like trying to accommodate a, a range of. One hundred percent stealing the pointless pillar idea, dude. Messing with your players is great <laughs> unless you're a player. <laughs> yeah, and we looked at several designs that. We'll be able to use uh, an angled thing within the regular, uh, you know, insert. But when we really accounted for like smaller dice, like the standard acrylic die shape, kind of fit in there, but also didn't fit very deep. Mm -hmm. So we decided to just like do cutouts on the sides of the hole, so that uh, and they're angled a little bit in there, so they sit in there. Or you can use that uh, insert that we have. And then you know, one of our sort of our final answers, like we tried a lot of things. We were like, well, you can get most dice in there, not everything, but we're like, we're just gonna sell it with a die so it's complete. So you, you know, yeah. Because the other thing was like, well, then let's say you want to track your spell slots with this, and you you've got six level spells. You have to then have six matching d sixes that you're pulling from another thing, or where are you gonna get this? So we're like, let's just make sure they have they come with the dice, so that they. Um, so they just they have something a that you know fits and b is like a match set that'll work for everything but it does fit you know if you want to swap out if you want to put in your prismatic glass this is the uh norse foundry one right you can yeah. it fits most it fits most dice there's some really chonky ones that don't quite get in there but yeah and one of the things that sorry i'll, I'll go back to that when we're done with the dice thing the way that the light is hitting that f the the Norse Foundry five right now is very good. Because the f the Wild Earth doesn't quite fit. I think the dispel. Well, Wild Earth are a little oversized. The dispel and Wild Earth are yeah too big. Oh, I thought I counted mm -hmm. that for that. No, we we ultimately decided to just fit. Yeah, because then the thing that's gonna get too big. And the other really smart thing is you made it pillar height, right? Thirty eight. Yeah, and that's what so there was a with. certain like. It couldn't get too wide because it would start getting silly looking. And there was, you know, we yeah. wanted it to be functional also, but it was cool elevation. Yeah, that was decided pretty early on that, like, if we want to make it a pillar, we want to make it be able to work as a dungeon or any, or sorry, any terrain pillar as well. So it's basically just the same. Well, I'll bring this over here. Basically, you can use that as elevation or just. Yeah, it's made to match our. Yeah. yeah, standard elevation height. Also, the color scheme fits pretty well with Dungeon of Doom. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of Dungeon of Doom, uh, people were wondering if we could take the pool from Dungeons and see if the uh, uh, counter dial fits in there. Ooh. Good. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, apparently, the Cavern Seep Summoning Circle is just a little bit too big to fit inside the Dungeon of Doom well. It's like a millimeter too big. <laughs> what is? The summoning circle from Caverns Deep is like a millimeter too big to fit inside the pool, apparently. Yeah. Ah, it fits in. Ten. So now you can put your, uh, you can have your crazy pillar counting trap in the, uh... Oh, yeah. Like, you're just in a dungeon that this slowly ticks down. Or up. Yeah. Or... And you don't know what it means. Yeah. Eight. It's how many meters. Ten. It's, 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 <laughs> it's, like, it's like the height of the water. <laughs> and the place starts floating out. as it fills up. Or you've got to you've got to get on there and turn this thing. Like the players have to use strength or whatever to turn, to turn it till you get to like a certain oh. number. Different numbers open different. Make doors. it an like, make it an elevator on a twenty floor dungeon. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. You have, that's you have twenty different builds you know, off the, to the side. The dungeon elevator. That's fun, right? You go into this is like the. This is the main room, and then it, you just the door opens. You turn it to one thing, open, and you don't know what you're gonna get. Or maybe there's a menu, and they have to right. so they yeah. have to check all the things. They, yeah, they have no idea what's gonna. There's like a little riddle or something. It says each floor has its own. It's like oh. a puzzle solving thing. They have to every time they go to the the wrong floor, like they're having to deal with like an extra encounter. Or maybe you just gotta figure out the right order to get all the stuff on the different floors. And as you go, like you kind of stumble through something, you maybe start getting into a groove. But then like yeah yeah. 
and some you know some bad guy while you're gone then every 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 floor of the dungeon just has like a hole the size of this of the pool so that you can just like drop this into the center of whatever build they go to (laughs) you could be a teleporter it could be oh man let's put it show it in this uh, build too uh, you can use that as a skirmish game, capture the flag objective. You get a point for every mini you have closest each round. Yeah, yeah for sure. Um, there's another thing. Oh, they're also talking about like the uh, using like the the plaques with like first level, second level, and stuff on it to uh, uh, indicate like which floor of a dungeon you're Ooh. on or something. That's uh, fun. And then Finley brought up. Uh, I I don't know if you know this. Uh, in Europe, they count floors differently than we do. The first floor is the second floor, right? So what we call the first floor, they call zero, basically. Yeah. It's they ground, just don't like call ground, the floor, ground floor. You're on the ground. First floor is until the, the only practical application of my French education that I ever had was when I was working in a restaurant on the third floor of the, of the Time Warner Center. And uh, there was a French family who was extremely confused, saying they had a reservation for our restaurant and everything. They were trying to figure out, and I was like, oh, you were told to go to the third floor, which is the fourth floor for, uh, which is the fourth floor for you, or, uh, right, well, no, you were, were told to go to the, the, it was something, or no, second floor, yeah, you were told to go to the third floor, or you were told to go to the second floor, so you wound up on what we call the third floor, and it was, and just, like, and just like being able to figure that out, like, I know exactly which restaurant you're supposed to be at. Okay. <laughs> so Finley is, is confused on where he lives? What was going Finley on? doesn't know where he lives. Yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, no. He's he's saying like that, that begs the question of whether we then need, would need a plaque that says zero floor or like ground floor uh, for the European backers. If it's the dungeon level, it's the fourth level of the dungeon. Is, but isn't the first level of the dungeon the first level of the dungeon? Whether or not it's wait. Hold if, on. It, if it's if it's a dungeon in Europe, no. The first the first floor of the dungeon it's is just the, the dungeon. The first time you go up the stairs. But what if you go down? Yeah. Is the cellar, do they count backwards? Basements, from, like, basement one, basement two. You just follow Zelda logic for that. So mm-hmm. then the dungeon, so because you're starting at the ground level, if the dungeon's below ground, then you just start at one. What? <laughs> right, because if, if ground level is zero, the first floor of the dungeon will be, will be the first okay, floor yeah, down. So, so, yeah, below, so. Because the ground is zero. Unless you started your dungeon on the ground level, then the first level will be. On the second so this hypothetical dungeon is a tower setup and not not a cavern uh, setup. Uh, dungeon, <laughs> okay, but dungeon I mean, usually stops it. It goes down. I, <laughs> this dungeon is a tower in Europe. <laughs> why don't we use the metrics? Well, that's why we're going to have a white erase uh, one that you can write whatever you want on it. So you can, uh, if you want to white or do a, a uh, if you want to do level zero, floor zero, yeah. I mean... I guess a level there, if we're, if these were reflecting uh, spell slots, level zero is pretty much a cantrip, right? So the yeah. first floor is a cantrip? Yes, yeah, the cantrip level. Yeah. <laughs> we enter the cantrip level. This is the other thing. Remember when cantrips were called zero level spells? Yeah. Man, those were the days. No, the kids they, understand they, they weren't. They, have it. <laughs> they, they were, they was uh, spell cast. Remember when use rope was its own skill? And you, yeah. could, and you could spend all of your skill points just building your ability to use rope and ignore everything else. Wilderness. Uh, could wilderness you imagine survival. doing that? I can. I did. And it, look what it got you. So that's the other fun one you can do with them is, let's see. This. Right, can, so this build. Uh, this build is actually inspired, I think it was a, a request by Wilderness Encounter, uh, asked to see the tracker next to the Draconic Doors uh, to see if they... Does uh, it fit? The motifs Does it look cool? Yeah, and we were like, oh, that looks pretty good. And then it was like, why don't we just use it to make a dragon's, like, lair, like, horde room, basically. Uh, and so that's why this build exists. So yeah, they have, like, some pretty... Toby, were you thinking about these doors when you were designing it, or was it just, like, a happy coincidence? <laughs> I guess it was a happy coincidence. I forgot the dragons were even red on there. It was a red... Well... I didn't choose a color, but I, I guess I suggested. Well, we that. wanted to work yeah. with Dungeon of Doom, yeah, so yeah. then red seemed like the thing, yeah. and it was like, yeah. So we got a little dragon for it. Yeah. What I was showing for is you can. I like that. Uh, there's two dragons on the door. And there's only one, but there's two thrones. He's really hoping for the, his yeah. uh, Miss Dragon. Miss Dragon is gonna yeah. come along. Why does he even sit in there? 
maybe they're stolen thrones, they're yeah. magic thrones that pillage from the, uh, yeah. I guess, yeah, I, I guess I pictured this being, like, this was, like, maybe the dragon, like, chased, like, the king and queen out of this, out of this place and has taken it over or something. Then they should not put dragon or door. They should put humans because the dragon. Yeah, the, dragon's the dragon did that. It's actually it's actually graffiti. The ah, dragon. The dragon graffiti. Yeah. <laughs> Draconic graffiti. Or maybe the... or maybe like this was a kingdom where like they used a lot of like dragon imagery for like their they maybe they, and so like part of it was like hubris. It's like, I mean, you're using like, our 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 imagery and like maybe you've taken like a dragon name or something for like your, for like your royal family's name or something. If that were the case, so many animals will try to claim stuff from us. Oh, absolutely. Dogs, cats. Oh, dogs yeah. would have it in for us. Yeah. Pandas? No, pandas are truths. Uh, I think there are more businesses named after pandas than there are pandas. Fair. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm also, being real. So do we have any, uh, do we have any questions? Uh, anything else you want to see? Like ideas. These, uh, Guild, of, yeah. Guild of Poison had an idea saying a dungeon that only lets you cast spells at the level of the floor you're on so the markers aren't just indicating the floor oh, level. Oh, fun. Yeah. It's capping your... Uh, and then cap. you could build puzzles specifically around what level spells are available uh, at that time. The magic mist puzzle. Uh, yeah. The higher the level... We have not done the giveaway yet, Casper Kenobi. Oh, let's do it. Maybe we, oh, yeah, maybe we uh, do it. What's the, what's the word, Toby? I'm trying to think of one word. And I don't know why. It doesn't even matter how hard I try. Are you, uh... Chris's musical career almost took off. That did. Has, serpent. Uh, what is it? Serpent, because it's a winged serpent. 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 Alright. Serpent. Serpent. All right. If you want a chance to win $50 for the Reliquaries Pledge Manager, uh, type serpent in chat and you'll be entered into the giveaway. Uh... That's basically it. Anybody can get it from anywhere, and then we will apply it to your account once the Kickstarter is closed and the pledge manager is open. Ooh. Uh, let's see. Well, it's a lot of serpents. That's a lot of serpents. We need, Why did it uh, have to be serpents? Uh, we need uh, St. Patrick? Who's the one that, uh, that drove yeah. out the serpents, right? That's, that's, I think it was St. Patrick, Patrick, yeah. Yeah, we need St. Patrick to get in here. I think it was George was the dragons. George the dragon slayer? Yeah. And yeah, I don't know. Did you just come into a town saying, I slayed the dragons, and they're like, oh, I've Ruby. never seen dragons. Like, exactly, I've been at work. Yeah. <laughs> the reason you haven't seen them is because I killed why them. Do, why do we need a dragon slayer? What do you even do? Have you seen a dragon lately? <laughs> <laughs> no. Case in point. I've been doing this unpaid for too long. Yeah. Pay up. That's a good... Uh, it's a good That's character, a good, but background. the NPCs, or no, yeah. like the NPCs of, you know, they're extorting the town, because right? they're dragon slayers or whatever. Yeah. Then the dragon shows up. Yeah. Wasn't it Doctor Jones? I don't get that joke. Oh, it was Sir Stop. Pent. It's a yep. There we go. Sir Pent. The serpent of Oaris, capital city of Drance, both feared and admired. What else? Um, what else do we? Uh, what else do we need to cover on these? Uh, it's, a, I mean, it's, it's, it's one piece, so it's not as complicated yeah. as some of the past ones. Yeah. The dial, shown the dial's double-sided. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That dial, like the idea of using it as like an elevator or a teleporter is so good. Yeah. Kind of rad, actually. And it, you know, here's the, here's the thing that could really depress your players. You oh, think nice. they get to level 20 and they got it? You flip it over and you go <laughs> 21 to, <laughs> 21 you've to 40. The, <laughs> you've, cleared the, you've cleared all 20 floors of the dungeon. Congratulations. That, now, that, I get, now I get ready for floors 21 well, to Well, the, the pillar like the hovers up woo, 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 and then the thing flips over and drops down. It's like, no! Oh, no. Just whole floor flips even with the pillar and there's another pillar on the bottom. <laughs> Upside down. It's a pillar on a pillar. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, originally the oh, lifestyle awesome. didn't have a, a design on it, but we decided... Wanted to yeah, go. this was just gonna be plain. No, the under got crazy. Cause yeah. they needed to look cool under there. Yeah, bring out the geometry and the stuff from the yeah. pillow. Yeah. Well, if there aren't any more, uh, if there aren't any questions, uh, we should get out of here. That's fair. Yeah, we'll make, uh, it a, make it a shorter day. Yeah. Uh, we'll get uh, we gotta roll the giveaway first. first. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Wait. Oh, Mace is shouting. Wait. Roll the giveaway. Doing it. That delay. All right. I'm not gonna not roll the giveaway. 
Uh, or is all right, guys, you got 30 more seconds to type serpent if you have not already. How does it look upside down? Is it a table or something? The uh, the counter? Yeah. Oh, the ability tracker? You could put a uh, big, uh, yeah, big table. Big uh, table. Oh. <laughs> it's a, just a big table. A yeah. table for giants. So Maybe you could use it to hold something up. Yeah. For two not too bad. I feel like I want it to be wide enough to cover the whole bit. Well, I guess also it won't be a white. It, oh, the it's, it's white because it's a polystone Same prototype. Yeah. Uh, but if the, the actual thing will be uh, colored underneath. We could put... No, there's definitely something you could put on top of it. That would be a Question. Can you sandwich the dial forward. between two pillars, please? Yes. Huh. Whoa. Oh boy, now that's a puzzle. Man. Yeah, that's what I was saying. It flips yeah. over. It just, it just flips over. It's a mirror. <laughs> when you go to 21 through 40, it's a mirror of the previous 20 levels using magnets and trays, yeah. so it's all upside down. Yeah, so you and go on the, the, the ceiling of all the levels you went up you, before. You pull a stone temple. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Toby gets it. Yeah. <laughs> Just flips. How about you, Miles? You played Majora's Mask? Yeah. No. Yes? What? I don't know. Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask has a temple where you get yeah. you get Thanks. through and you beat the mini boss and then the whole thing flips upside down. They're all the same. And you yeah. but you go the, go back through the dungeon upside the, down basically. The base. Yeah. Roll it. RG Dice Boutique says they have to make a Tiamat dice now. Which I uh, I would love to see that actually. Well, it, would you try to get like all? You try to like represent all of the heads in one die. That would be amazing. Wait, she has and five heads, right? Upside yeah. down pillar looks like a saw. So what's the last one? What? <laughs> a saw blade trap. Does it stick to a terrain tray like a stilt? Yes. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, it's the same. It's the same height as the thirty-eight millimeter stilts. How does it stick to a floor? I kind of like it upside down like that. Yeah. Yeah. And you could do a cool platforming thing over. Oh, like, that's wrong. Yes, yeah, so let's roll the giveaway. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, hey. oh, 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 hold if on. You, no, if Wilson no, 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 Counter wins this, it'd be phenomenal. Whoa. I don't know how to pronounce that. You will. Oh, you will never know. That's clever. That's cute. Look at that. All right, you will never know. You will never know one. What you will never win? know. It's a it's a heavily abbreviated. I got it though. I got it. Uh, all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna whisper you. We'll get your uh, Kickstarter. Uh, email so we can apply the credit. And uh, yeah, uh, there are a couple other questions. Let's get that. Will there be any kind of coating on the dial to prevent scratches and or fingerprints? Um, probably. We're gonna end up, we're gonna UV print the, uh, the numbers on the dial so they're super crisp and easy to read and we'll have to seal it with something. And yeah, they will be, this is a, this is a rough, Early prototype, that's why it looks kind of... It's the thing uh, that we should start up every stream with is these are all prototypes we cast in-house that are not yeah, as high quality. These are washers, like <laughs> just washers glued in there that Miles put in so we had some metal, like they're, uh, you know... Just did my best. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was, no, they work. They work great. Hmm. Yeah, we, yeah we, don't, we don't have the resources here to uh, just needed to show how it works. Yeah. But the actual it finished works. product will be yes. finished. Uh, yeah. The finished product will be finished. Yeah. That's going to be the, <laughs> our tagline. All right. Um, just make sure there's nothing else I've missed. They use enamel paint at the factory. Yeah, the paint that they use at the factory is super tough. It's intense. Sometimes to a fault for people who want to try and strip it and repaint. Uh, it's it's That's it's awesome. it's firm stuff. Any update on the four columns option? Uh, we're working on a terrain pledge. Next couple of days, we should have something. I wasn't sure how much I could say. Yeah. We're working on something. Question. The intro video has a cool shot of a D20 pulsing on the Radiant Horror, but it does not come with a remote. Only the Elven Mystic Crescent comes with a remote. It's the pixel. It's the pixel die. It's the die. pixel die, yeah. Yeah. That die, uh, that die had the LEDs in it, and I think it... it, it 20 you addressable it. LEDs. Yeah, an LED so in every it, face of the die, and you control it with your phone. We're gonna, we're actually gonna have a video on that coming out soon. The light in the radiant horror also just pulses. Yeah, yeah, the, ra the yeah, the radiant lore, it's a pulse radiant LED. lore. But that die is, uh, yeah, their their Kickstarter was like a year and change ago. I think they're they're hoping to ship them like a year from now. They they blew and up. They're you know, awesome. Well, they haven't. There's some challenges with the chips and shortages and yeah, all of it. They got, they're they're gonna be hard, ridiculous. Yeah. Like. Those dice are so, like, having 
handled one. Like it's you saw it, Miles. Like that was the thing. They came like, in oh, like a couple days before it. we launched. They came in with some of the prototypes, and we uh, we got to shoot with them. Um, and we are doing a behind the scenes video on it that will be out soon. Yeah, they're really they're awesome. But yeah. if you you can probably sign up for their mailing list, and they'll tell you as soon as they're for sale in the store. Sign yeah, on the Anvil, or do you guys have some free time? Uh, Tonight, oh, right, it's let's go to the streams. Yeah, tonight, um, on the Anvil, but also it's starting as a, uh, a guest stream with Ginny D and Jason Charles Miller. We'll be talking about uh, blending music and role-playing, uh, and this can mean, as a DM, using music to enhance the session. It can mean, if you're playing a bard, like, what are ways to actually, like, incorporate music that make things more fun for people as opposed to annoying them. Huh. Uh, <laughs> all that, all, all, all that jazz. Um, we'll be doing that first hour, and uh, then letting them go and doing a, a brief on the anvil. Uh, we were we were hoping thing. to unbox uh, the Titan's Tooth Glade Did Forest Mega Pack, but it's not not here yet. But it just it landed yesterday at port. So so we'll have next to week. Too. What do we have scheduled for next week's Wednesday? I think we might have... Off the top of my head, I think that might be the stream with Brian Lee Mulligan. And no, that's Thursday, I think. That's Thursday? Yeah, that's the 18th. I don't know what Yes, is. yeah, it's the day yeah. before closing. Well, I think... Hopefully we can, I think we can unbox... I think there's not a guest stream on that Wednesday. Nice, so maybe we can unbox... Yeah. Uh, if, we, if we get it. Because it, it, it has to get to the warehouse, and then they have to receive... They have to take the whole you know, inventory of all the container, get yeah. it all there, wherever. So actually, it's probably, we're not going to have it, realistically. Oh. Cool. They're not because it, it's not even they don't even have them yet. Much less have them all sorted out. Much less have one of the one of those pulled out and shipped to us. So yeah. um, something to look forward to. So next week we'll have small lens unboxing. Yeah. Okay. Um, no, we won't. No, we, we won't. won't. Have it. No, it's like we won't. It just it landed yesterday. At the earliest the warehouse would even get it would be a week from now. Oh, okay. And then they they have I to actually that. inventory. They have to receive this stuff, which they, you know, it's a whole container full of, it's like, I don't know, however many hundreds or thousands of sets, like, they have to... Fair. Okay, never mind. No unboxing, and, but yeah. that means we'll have a bunch of stuff to unbox right after the Kickstarter. <laughs> Woo! Uh, you know what it also means? You guys are going to have some stuff to unbox soon. Like, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's imminent. Like, it's they're going to get gonna some, they're going to get some before Christmas, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thank God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All the all the shipping and just oh, it's just the worst. This last year, but it's coming. It's coming. Wildlands uh, is en route. Nice. I'm trying to do something else tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow we don't have a stream in the morning. We have a guest stream at seven. Right. So tonight's stream is at seven Eastern. It's a little over seven hours away from now. Tomorrow night we'll have another stream at seven Eastern. Uh, that's going to be uh, an athlete stream. Uh, we've got three different professional athletes. Uh, who all play uh, tabletop games and stuff uh, coming on. We've got Brandon Cutler, who's a, a wrestler. We have uh, the awesome. uh, Travis Frederick, who I believe is a retired lineman for the Texans, I believe. Might be for the Texans. Cap. Is that a team? Houston Texans. Really? Nate's not going to be leading the athlete stream. Wait, there's really uh, a team called the Houston Texans? There's a team called the Houston Texans? No, you're making this up. No, it's a real... Is this it's, real? Yes, it is. No. I, think I, I would not it, know. Yes. What and then Johnny sports? Stanton, what, what who you might of, see tear it up as fullback for the Browns right, right now. Football. What kind of what kind of sports ball are the Houston Texans? They're fo football. Travis so. Frederick and Johnny Stanton are both football. Boy, I don't Brendan know Cutler's. sports. Name. All right. Yeah. Okay. Nate's not going to be leading no, uh, that I, conversation, I, so don't worry. If you're invested in sports, uh, we're, <laughs> we're going to have somebody else leading it. Uh, well, I'm glad I learned something we're, every we're day. I learned Andrew. a little something new. Andrew, Andrew might be leading it. Yeah. Uh, he's just making sure that he can get somebody to watch his daughter during the stream time. Um, it's a huge state. We ran out of team names, says Jeff. <laughs> there. Is there an on the anvil Wednesday before Turkey Day? I think that week we're going to be off because we, it's no, the we're, week after. Because that's the week that after. There's nothing the going on. Uh, we're all just going to be yes. catatonic. Uh, are they big league football? Yeah, they're both NFL players. Well, Travis Frederick is retired, I believe. Johnny Stanton is it's his first or second. He's, he's fairly new. He's new blood, and he's doing really well. They're, they're NFL. Um, Johnny Stanton is playing for the Browns. Uh, 
Let's see. Look at part of that one. Browns, the Charlie Browns. Browns. It's These two teams popular. called the Oilers, who then moved to Tennessee and became oh, Titans. Yeah. Oh, wait, here. the Oilers are in. Wait, isn't that the. Oh, no. There's Let's see Indianapolis. Oilers? We've been on the. I was on the half yard, the, the middle, the 50 yard line at the um, at the Oilers Stadium or whatever. What's the one in Indianapolis? I don't know. Indianapolis? That's the Colts. The Colts Stadium. Yeah. Isn't it called the Oil the Hudson Oil Stadium or something? The Lucas Oil Field. Uh, yeah, that's right. Lucas Oil Field? Yes. Yeah. We, are, we, had, we, had, we ran the uh, we were in the D&D game there during Gen Con. Austin's new soccer team. Like right on the Indiana line. Maybe. Crazy, uh, this yeah. big yeah. giant. Is, is Washington still uh, called the football team? All right, we, we're let's call this a stream. <laughs> right, right, right. We've right. Gone down so that's happening tomorrow. Month. Actually, uh, Friday, we're. I think Friday is also just a guest stream that evening, and it is. The. I'm blanking. Well, good I'm night. <laughs> good afternoon. Yeah. Whatever. It is. We'll have it. We'll have it in the Kickstarter we'll update. We'll see you. We'll see you guys at seven tonight for on the end. Cinematic Apple. storytelling. Cinematic storytelling good. is on Friday. Thanks for tuning in. Okay. Congrats on winning. Uh, and if you haven't yet, go check out the Kickstarter on Kickstarter. I don't know where the link is. Uh, Reliquaries. Oh, I'll, I'll put the, Reliquaries. I'll put the link <laughs> it's, uh, oh, man. We're, uh, it's live. I realize if we didn't, I, I, we we didn't tell anybody in any of these streams to actually go back to Kickstarter, which maybe was a uh, we have nine. We have nine more days of this night. All right, good. Yeah, All we're right. going to totally hold up. And this is, I slept. I fell asleep at eight o'clock last night. Not by choice. Like my body just collapsed, and sounds I like, like sounds like I slept eight to six. So however many hours that is, that's so like ten solid hours, and I'm still like barely. Uh, sounds like heaven. It was uh, amazing. Yeah, you need to take a day off. It's, it's been like forty-two days straight. Yep. All right. Thank you, everybody. Goodbye. Goodbye.